everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Art and Hearts with your instructor, me, Miss Smith. Today we're going to be talking about the artist Dora Salcedo and about the type of art that you can make called shrouds. I'll talk about that in a minute. Doris is a Colombian artist. She lives in Bogota and she primarily works in sculpture. And her work is very important. She deals with um, very heavy, important questions that I think all of us should be asking about life, about death, about who gets treated fairly and who doesn't get treated fairly. And people that usually do not get treated, when we treat each other in a kind way, we're being humane to each other. We're showing humanity. Um, but her work mostly deals with honoring and remembering individuals that were not treated in a humane way, that were treated very poorly, that were abused, that were hurt, um, and in many cases, even tortured. So, but she asked those questions and she asked many of her viewers, us that are looking at our work to ponder, to think about the questions that she's rising in her work. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna show a clip a couple of minutes long of Doris talking and it's very important. She's an amazing speaker. I encourage you to listen to what she's talking about. And I'm going to be doing a demo in insp inspired by a body of work that um, Doris did called a Flor de Piel. And it's a, it's these um, a group of shrouds that she makes out of roses that are half dead but not fully dead. They're half alive and half dead. And a shroud is basically like a long piece of cloth or fabric. It doesn't necessarily have to be that, but traditionally it's a fabric, a long piece of cloth that usually would cover over um, a body, somebody who's passed away to honor them. And um, so I'm gonna show you how you can actually make your own shroud. This is, I'm rusting in this one. Um, but you don't have to do that. Basically what I used was um, silk organza type of fabric, a very sheer fabric, some metal and um, vinegar and gloves. Although in the video, I have to admit, I don't have gloves, but you must, must, must wear gloves because you don't wanna cut yourself because you can get tetanus. So um, wear gloves. Anyways, this is just one way that I'm showing you of rusting because of how you can make a shroud because rusting for me reminds me of nostalgia, memory, loss. And recently I just lost my, my pet kitty, my cat kitty, um, a few weeks ago, right before Christmas. And it was very hard. And I kind of have this little piece just to kind of, you know, remember her and to think of her. Um, and that's just a personal record that I'm keeping of a memory of a loss. So it's kind of like if you journal something that you're having a bad day, you might want to write it down. Well, with art, you can record it um, visually, and this is one way. Now, we also, in previous episodes, I showed you how you can make stamping tools, right, out of everyday household objects. So you do, you can put, you can get a shower curtain, you can get um, a towel, you can get paper towel, anything that you want. You can make your own stamping tool, you can paint on it, you can print on it, stamp on it, whatever it is that you want to do to make a mark. It's mark making, right, for your shroud. However you want to do it. Get a big shower curtain, paint on it. Um, you can get a piece of uh, cardboard. You can get a piece of uh, paper towel. It's really up to you and what you have available. But if there's a pet that you've recently lost or a loved one during this time that has passed, you want to honor or commemorate them, this is, I, this is an amazing way that you can express yourself and remember them. And there's a whole bunch of ways that you can do it. So today is about reflection, memory, and commemoration. And at the end, after Doris talks, I will show you how you can make your very own um, shroud with rusting. But again, if you're going to rust, you have to wear gloves. An adult has to be with you too. All right, let's listen to what Doris has to say. In, uh, six bodies of work uh, that uh, I spent a long period of time, maybe 30 years in the making. As you enter the space, you encounter a piece, um, its title in Spanish is Plegaria Muda, 
the trans it could be translated as um, silent prior. It's a piece that is uh, related to an event that took place um, in Colombia, but uh, that can be extrapolated to civil wars all over the world, uh, where we find uh, unmarked tombs of innocent civilians who have been killed um, during, during these wars. They're placed in a way, not the way you walk in a cemetery, but um, that you walk on the grave. But here you are sort of inside the space because the soil uh, comes to, 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 to you. You are, you are in, literally walking in this maze. The pieces have grass growing underneath the table as a way to signal uh, the fact that life survives, that no matter how harsh the conditions are, life will always prevail, and that's what is important in these pieces. Another piece that is in the installation is titled Tabula Rasa. This piece, as all of my work, is based on testimonies of victims. In this case, there are victims of sexual violence, in some cases sexual slavery, and talking to them for, for three years was a, a very painful experience, difficult to grasp, difficult to understand why a human being could be destroyed in such a way. It's composed by uh, five tables, five wooden tables that have been completely shattered into teeny tiny splinters and then glued back together. And there are um, parts that are missing, so the, the piece becomes even more vulnerable. These women are um, uh, human beings that have managed to reveal themselves in a way that I find absolutely uh, admirable. It's extraordinary that they manage to uh, reconstruct a human being after the attack, uh, which I think is a kind of murder in which the body survived, but the victim, uh, victims, um, her, her, her being, uh, the essence of her being, is being uh, utterly shattered. Uh, they rebuild themselves little by little, and this struggle between destruction and mending is what these pieces are all about. Uh, they, they required a constant effort uh, of, uh, of overcoming the destruction. Uh, so each bit of wood uh, has to find its proper place in order to function, in order to give uh, a structure back to the piece. So that's what this piece is all about. I hope uh, my work um, works as a funeral oration. So there are many human beings in the context of work who have been denied the right of a funerary ritual. Then I need to make a tribute, a work that uh, is uh, what this victim is lacking. Um, I decided to make a flower offer, offering to a victim of torture. I had to make the most fragile piece because it's a piece that had to come, uh, in, in my mind, come in contact with, the, with, with broken skin, with, uh, with the tortured body. Uh, so I needed a shrouded made out of thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of rose petals uh, that are maintained in a stage that is neither completely dead nor alive. And, and I stitched them in order to make a huge shroud that could cover these body, bodies that were not properly delivered to, to death. The piece that you see right now is a, is a long shroud. I've been working on it for like seven or eight months, rusting it. So that's what you see. So going to demo, what we'll need is like at least some sort of fabric or paper, 12 by 12 inches, a few pieces of metal. You must have gloves, you must spray bottle of vinegar. You can put water in it too, so it's not so strong, and a pair of scissors. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's see how these came out. Oh, they came out pretty well, actually. I put saran wrap down so it, sh it won't affect the table. But 
but I would like to do a few more um, for my shroud. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Show the bottoms a bit more with vinegar. So these are just that's the shroud taking off the metal and um, ideally I could keep going for like <laughs> a couple more hours but and once it dries you can technically um, soak this in coffee but I think because I usually use glue for this to adhere for rusting because it makes it it kind of freezes it. Whereas this, if you just put water or something, it could easily just um, melt. But I really, really like what's happened here. I even like the table part. <laughs> um, so this is my shroud. It's not as lively as it was on the table, but it does have kind of that rusting feeling to it. And anyway, so I'm really happy with it and I hope you liked what we did. <laughs> 